Hey everybody, welcome back to Anderson's TV. I am at the O2 with Lizzie Hale. Yes. It's the last night of the tour. I know. Looking forward to going home for Christmas. Uh, you know, it's it's bittersweet because we're we've been talking about that a lot. How I don't I don't want to go, but I'm also excited to go. <laughs> you know, like this tour has been just so absolutely amazing. We're out with our friends. Um, we've known all of these guys for over a decade. Wow. So um, it's just been one big family reunion, and I can't believe it's gone by so fast. Uh, it, we've been out here for six weeks, you know, I'm a different person now than I was before. <laughs> Have there so, been some epic jams along the way? Uh, absolutely. Well, everybody's, um, everyone's just such a musician. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of the chaos in the, uh, in the <laughs> Oreo cookie here. Um, you know, because we're, we're right in between, uh, Mammoth with Wolfie and then of course there's, uh, there's Alter Bridge. So when we hit the stage, it's, it's definitely the, uh, the, I hadn't, the cream I hadn't realized, of the Oreo. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't realized Wolfie was in uh, Mark's band as well. Yes. For, so it's like so incestuous. It really is because everyone's <laughs> been in each other's projects and, and uh, you know, just dipping their toe into all sorts of things. And so, um, and it's funny because because now, you know, uh, Mark ha sat me down yesterday at, at catering. He's trying to get me into some some odd projects. So I'm just Do like, it. am I, wait, did, did I pass the audition? You know, am I in the club? <laughs> That's epic. <laughs> so well, look, I must admit, You've got a fascinating backstory of uh, of starting the band with your brother, and mm -hmm. I gather with your dad as well, like yeah. early doors. <laughs> and it, what a crazy stat to have been in the band for more years that you've been alive than not in the band, which yeah. is like bonkers, it's right? It's kind of crazy. Um, you know, my little bro and I talk about that all the time. Can, can you believe we're still doing this? Um, but there's a there's a very fine line between um, obsession yeah. and determination. <laughs> You know, so it's it's a little of both. But yeah, started the band. Uh, I was 13. My little brother, who's our drummer, was 10 at the time. Um, my little <laughs> brother, um, and I, you know, I know this is all about him, but all roads lead to RJ. Uh, my little brother, RJ, has always been just incredible at the drums. Right. You know, he started playing when he was eight, and by the time he was 10, he knew every John Bonham, you know, like to, to, to uh, uh, known to man. And so, um, I was like, well, all I have to do is, <laughs> is write some silly little songs around some stuff that he plays and, and we're a band. And um, we just became obsessed with it. We, uh, you know, we entered ourselves in a talent show, ended up uh, getting the third place trophy um, for this one song that we wrote called Love is Power that was like five minutes long, had a drum solo in the middle of it. Um, and then from there, it was just like, where else can we play? So, um, you know, parents definitely helped us out, drove us to the gigs. We had bowling alley gigs and into bars and then spiraled out in clubs. Um, yes, my dad was our bass player for, for a white hot second. Um, <laughs> There's hope for me. Well, I've got two daughters. Oh, okay. And one, they're very young at the moment, but I've got some cute YouTube footage of one of them playing drums and one of them singing and I play guitar. So I'm kind of hoping that I can it, be it that dad for it, a white hot second. It will definitely happen, <laughs> but what you have to, uh, you know, <laughs> and this is something that I've explained to my father over the course of many years, is that don't take offense when over the course of a summer, you're like the cool dad and then all of a sudden, uh, dad, what, we don't wanna, we don't wanna be seen with you anymore. You know, it's like that was, that was what happened, you know, the dad was in the band, like this is so cool, dad's in the band, dad's awesome, he's like letting us play rock shows and take us to the bars and everything. That's all right. It's the it's the break on the sofa. Yeah, exactly. We, we don't <laughs> we'll wanna, just wheel off. We down don't want to start it up. <laughs> yeah, and then we had to sit dad down and be like, Dad, we're gonna look for some people our own age, you know. So um, secretly but, devastated. And then, and then yes, dad was <laughs> devastated, and he's like, Well, can I still come to the shows? And I'm like, Well, someone has to drive us to the shows. <laughs> so he was our roadie for for many years. But um, but yeah, I mean, we just kept going and uh, named the band Hailstorm for that day, that first gig, Brilliant. and then. 25 years later, we're still doing it. So. It's the best name. I mean, uh, thank you. I, 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 yeah, that, that is the name. Unfortunately, my surname doesn't work in that way. But never mind. We'll come up with another way. I'll insist. Uh, your, your, <laughs> your, your daughters will be creative with it, I'm sure. So I, tell me about the, the players then when you were um, learning to play guitar. Actually, no, that's right, because you piano first, right? And then guitar. Yeah, I was piano first. Um, uh, that was just basically because it was put in front of me when I was five. and. I was using it as a songwriting tool. Um, one of my, speaking of my little brother again, one of my little brother's uh, friend's moms uh, taught me how to play piano. And uh, I was doing courses in school. Um, I was never very good at sight reading, right. I, you know, just a very basic, you know, just dumb musician. And 
um, this, you know, <laughs> uh, her name was Mrs. Agliata, and she discovered that if I, she taught me chord progressions, so she would teach me mm -hmm. Beatles chord progressions. And, uh, and all of a sudden I realized, it just clicked. I'm like, wait, so I can take all of these progressions, mix them up, match them up, and then I can write my own songs over top of it. Like, boom, all right, cool. So I started doing that and jamming with Little Brother in the band. And then, um, so what got me into the guitar, so we were already a band, uh, let's see, I was 16 when I started playing guitar. And I did fall into that one because we had hired a, a 16 year old uh, guitar player in the band. Um, he was in the band for eight months. He was only supposed to be in the band for six months because uh, his mother sat me down and basically <laughs> said, if we aren't signed in six months, I'm pulling him from the band. And so if you can imagine a 15 year old uh, trying to explain to this, you know, middle-aged woman that that's not how that works. First of all, we're not gonna be signed in six months and we shouldn't be signed in six <laughs> months. Anyway, eight months goes by, uh, you know, our, our guitar player's still in the band. I'm like, oh cool, his mom must have like, you know, changed her mind. Nope, she showed up at a gig, livid. Apparently he was lying to her. He oh, said he'd quit the band, but he kept doing gigs with us. Anyway, he got pulled from the band. I was devastated because I'm like, now we like had this guitar sound in the band that I, you know, couldn't let go of. So I'm like, fine. I'll learn how to play. And so basically <laughs> like sat there with my, you know, basically learning how to play by sight and by ear with my piano. Like, yeah, okay, that's E, that's there, you know, and you know, and just trying to figure out, okay, we have gigs on Friday. How can I do this? And then somebody taught me drop D and it was all over. <laughs> so that, that um, I hadn't realized, but is there, are there quite a lot of your sort of songwriting techniques, if you like, that come from the fact that you understand perhaps more theory than the average guitar player might uh, self-teach themselves? You know, I, I think that it's it's a it's a unique position to be in because I came from being, you know, a, a pianist first. So I look at the instrument in a different way mm. than if I had started on guitar. Um, whereas I feel like, you know, for any musician, whatever their second instrument is, it's a little bit easier to pick up on as long as, yeah. because you have the background with something else. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, I mean, I take a lot of, uh, a lot of what I do um, on guitar is based off of mm. what I know from keyboard and also what I do with my voice, so. Right, yeah, it's and, and who, were you, who were you trying to emulate back then? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was very much uh, obsessed with, uh, with my dad's music, so it was a lot of 70s and 80s mm -hmm. rock and roll, and um, so there was a lot of Tony Iommi, um, one of my uh, ultimate guitar heroes is uh, Tom Kiefer from Cinderella. Okay. Um, uh, part of the reason why uh, <laughs> why I like Gibsons and right. uh, and I do the thing and um, yeah and uh, honestly one of the I feel like the one of the most unsung guitar heroes uh, in the world is uh, Neil Young. Nobody ever right. really mentions Neil Young, but if you can do a solo playing one note. For like <laughs> eight measures, that's uh, pretty awesome to me. That's cool. Well, look, we're here today <clears throat> because Gibson very kindly uh, hooked us up, and I was surprised. Well, we've got a rack of guitars in here that your guitar we tech's wheeled in, and we're going to have a wander over and have a look at some of those in a minute. And obviously, you've got your signature guitar on your lap here. Um, there's no other brand in sight. This no. is like, are you, are you are, if we cut, do you bleed Gibson? Uh, d I definitely. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, as, as I, I've, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I guess in my juvenile way, I've, I've put it this way, whereas they were the one I was holding out for the prom for. Right. Um, because I was approached by a couple different uh, brands before Gibson, but I was always playing Gibson and, and uh, it was the, it was the first guitar that I actually like saved up to get mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and that was the dream. And so, uh, it was still kind of unbelievable when they approached me in 2012. I, I literally thought Slash was standing behind me and so wait, you're talking, wait, you're talking to me? <laughs> what? Um, so, uh, they've, they've been so wonderful and, uh, such an extended family, uh, for me, but you have to be careful because it's dangerous having, uh, being a part of the Gibson family. Uh, for instance, uh, with this signature, the gu guitar, the Explorer Bird, um, this came about because uh, we were we were hanging out at the NAM convention and we all went out to dinner together, and we had a couple glasses of wine, and I just kind of turned everyone and you know, like, you know what would be really cool, <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, a uh, an Explorer body but with the. Uh, uh, yeah, fiber. with the fiber yeah. headstock and they're like oh that's that's interesting and I just never thought anything of it and then all of a sudden during lockdown 
it uh, showed up at my door. So you have yeah. to be careful what you wish for. You just might get no, it. No, you know what? Because I've seen, <clears throat> I remember Joe Bonamassa did the Les Paul with the Firebird mm -hmm. headstock. And it always looked like it wasn't the right headstock for that guitar. <laughs> yeah. so whereas, something's wrong. Yeah, yeah, whereas when I was looking at this, it took me a second even, I had to go back to like a regular explorer to go, what is it that I'm seeing that's, ah, oh, it's the headstock. And then you go, you've nailed it there. Cause it's like, it kind of works, doesn't it? It doesn't look like it's the wrong headstock on the guitar. My uh, my personal theory when, when you're designing a signature model, if you want to do something, it has to be that those subtle differences. Mm. The, uh, the, the thing that makes it a little different, but it doesn't destroy the classic yeah. um, shape and, and what people love about it. Because, you, you know, you, you don't want to fix it if it ain't broken, but you want to enhance. Um, so I've done that with all of my signature guitars. You either just class it up, yeah. you just something a little bit different with the aesthetics, um, you know, maybe a little different with the pickups and all of this, but uh, but basically, you know, you keep it the way that you love it. Um, so th it's funny you say that because that's, that's basically been the comments on this the entire time. It's like, what? what's up with that one? Like, what's <laughs> what's going on with that? Because there's something about it, and then you have to explain, they're like, oh, now I see it. So. What What is the obsession with the Explorer, then? Because it's kind of, um, I don't know that you see a ton of artists playing Explorers. Usually only the super cool ones do. So what's the, what's the like, where where was the, did you get did you get an Explorer kind of look-alike guitar early doors, or was it just like a dream always to no, have? No, I, um, I was always a Les Paul girl, and, uh, and then when, I, I, I became obsessed with uh, Explorers when we were making our um, our first record on Atlantic, and we're out in California, and uh, this guy was uh, was selling this white Explorer on uh, on Craigslist, yeah. and he had it for a really cheap price. But I'm like, I don't have an Explorer. I should have an Explorer, and the poor guy was 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 uh, selling it to pay for medical bills, um, which you know that's the U.S. for you. And uh, so he was so excited that this was actually going to be played, and you know, and for for years we kept in touch. And I would uh -huh. I would send him pictures of us out on tour and playing his his Explorer. But um, what I love about the Explorer shape is that I feel like there are three three shapes at Gibson that are definitely not going to be country or, or pop, you know, and, and it's, it's the V of the Explorer and the, and the SG. And the thing about the, the, uh, the Explorer is that this iconic shape, you can see it from the back. Yeah. You know, it's, there's a, um, there's, it's an iconic shape. And the most beautiful thing that has happened in my journey is that I'll get letters from kids and you know how, like, you know, they haven't quite figured out how to put the the r you know <laughs> like they spell you know spell their own name right yeah. let alone and they will draw the explorer shape uh, on onto like a stick figure of of my body so it's become it's become kind of my calling card but i mean it's it's well balanced um it just feels like home mm. to me so i've been you look uh, comfortable with it it doesn't yeah. you know it doesn't look Even just like sit, a, sitting on yeah the I, I think it's would be easy to see a guitar like that and think oh that must be difficult to sit with it but you look you look comfortable with it. It looks like a good guitar. Yeah. It's 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 a. Uh, I, I like it a lot. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so tell me on on the signature one. Um, there's a few differences, aren't there, in terms of things like pickups and stuff. So yeah. what, what did you do to it? I ended up. So my uh, my last two signatures, I had the classic 57s in here, and these uh, these are the 70s pickups. The, mm -hmm. uh, is it vintage 70s, something like that? They're the, they're the higher output. Yeah, ones, they're right? a li I just yeah. wanted it to scream a little harder. Um, uh, I have the. Uh, I, I kept the mahogany body, but I have a rosewood fingerboard. And then um, a lot of it is just the aesthetics. Now, it's funny because my, uh, my guitar tech actually brought this up earlier because of the scale, because um, it's a 24. Yeah. Um, it sits different right. like you than the other than the other explorers, yeah. and I hadn't even really noticed that. But all of a sudden, you're like, <clears throat> it's, <laughs> your position is more here than it is here, you know? Um, so it's 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 pretty fantastic, but I use this uh, mainly for my drop C. Yeah, uh, there's some big strings on these. Yeah, there. well, you know, <laughs> I, I like to beat the hell out of it. So I, I luckily I have um, a, an amazing guitar tech that was like, well, we're gonna have to put heavier ones on there. You're, you're getting a little wild. <laughs> and is it a sta standard kind of neck carve or did you go for a different this is kind of vibe? Standard neck carve. Now I do have one in, in my stack we'll talk about later that we actually ended up uh, doing something different with the neck. But uh, you know, that's the thing about the Explorers as, as well is like for some reason, uh, I just, I'm in love with the way that the neck feels. And then again, it, it, I think that it's important 
for whether it's you know whatever guitar you fancy it's important for it to feel like it's a part of you because if it feels foreign or if you don't feel mm. cool <laughs> you know um you're not just not going to play well <laughs> i love i love the i know you know we're on here uh, with gibson today but we'll, we'll give a little shout out to marshall especially <laughs> oh, yes, as you're in the uk at the moment uh you've gone for it's does it get any more classic than a Gibson guitar into a JCM 800 kind of rig? I love that you've color matched your uh, amps to your guitars. That's, you know, a nice touch. But um, is that, was that, a, again, another relatively early in your career kind of combination that you hooked up with and just went, that's it, that's the sound? Yeah, my earlier rig, um, I was actually combining um, uh, a, a Mesa dual rectifier with actually one of my dad's old Fender right. <laughs> Fender amps, uh, bass amps, uh, just to kind of have that juxtaposition because I the basically I was trying to mimic what the Marshall does all on its own and and uh, this rig is actually different for me because I've never really uh, run through 20 watt heads before. Um, usually I, I have a <laughs> I have a hundred watt at home. Yeah. I have my JC 800s and um, you can get those up to about two. Um, so it's been a lot of fun that you, you're actually able to crank these guys, you know. So um, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's been amazing. And yes, of course, I, I like to be a little color coordinated, <laughs> you know. I mean, this, this, uh, this particular guitar, um, you know, was, uh, was different for me. I, I, I'm trying to introduce some color into my life, um, unlike my wardrobe. But, uh, you know, this is the accessories that I have. But, uh, but it's just that, that stark red was just like amazing. And so the wonderful people at Marshall UK ended up mocking it, it feels exactly. Like, it feels like red is having some great comeback at the moment. It, feel, it feels red like, is so it now. feels like sort of Hank, it feels like Hank Marvin did it and then Mark Knopfler kind of did it again. And then like no one's done it since, so. You can well, be it's, like, it's like lipstick and leather, man. It just never goes out of style. This is very true. Um, at sa same thing with, with uh, the combination with Marshall and, and Gibson. It's like, you That's know, a classic it's like, combination. yeah, classic combination, you know, again, a denim and a leather jacket. Should so, we go and have a look at some of these guitars in the rack? Do it. I think we should. Absolutely. Right. Well, you're not going to miss this one <clears throat> in the evening, are we? So, not at all. How did you get that? Because that so, is not a stock catalog color. It's not a stock catalog color at all. <laughs> um, they, uh, the wonderful people at Gibson actually made this um, as a surprise. I was, I did not know this was happening, um, but uh, they made me this. Just, it's a, it's a, uh, a rose gold um, sparkle finish. Um, they actually carved out the neck for me. Um, they are custom. Uh, Lizzie Hale pickups. Oh, cool. So they're just, they're, they're a little hot and, uh, you know, like me, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> they're a little hot, just a little, not, not a whole lot. Um, and, uh, and look at all of this, um, abalone. It's There's, stunning. It's just like every, the, they're all like the, the details. The, the, yeah, yeah. All of the binding. Um, they even, you know, found, uh, some knobs that have it in as well. And so it's just, it's just a beautiful guitar. Um, <clears throat> but it's mine. You can't have it. What, you, what are you tuning these to? Um, this one, this one actually, uh, at the moment is tuned to a standard drop D. Right. Okay. That's but it's got, it's got such a, it just has such a resonance to it. Just, and just playing low slung come naturally to you. Cause that, I, I'm, I, you know, I want to play, I want to be slash. Are you, are you one of these guys? Maybe not as, I'm, 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 on a, I'm sort of, I'm sort of learning to sort of go, come on, down, 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 down. Get, you know, uh, yes, uh, there's a couple different reasons. Um, uh, first of all, I like the resonance to be more here. Okay. Like here. Um, take that however you will. Um, and also that's just, it's what my idols did, man. It's like, it's, you, you see, you see, I was a, a, a music video junkie when I was a kid, back when they still played those on television. And, um, and that's just the way everybody held it. That's just how I feel cool. You know, um, now I, you know, I'm not like knee, knee down, you know, you don't go too far. The knees aren't going to do anything for you. Um, but, but yeah, I encourage I'm, you to I, lower. I, yeah, I love, I love the fact that it, it's not, <laughs> I love the fact that you didn't say, oh, I just find it comfortable down here. I love the fact you were honest and just said, well, it just looks cooler it just down looks here. Cool. It's like, you know, it, that's I, the truth, isn't it? I, it, it really is. And, and a, a lot of people are um, <clears throat> afraid to uh, admit that truth, that that's really all we're trying to do yeah. is look cool out here. Doesn't always work, but that's, you know, that's why you get into this stuff. That's why, um, you know, you're, you're watching these people perform and you're watching your idols perform. You're like, how do they do this? Mm. How come they look so cool doing that? How can I be that way? And so that's what sets you on your journey because when you're on stage and 
you're playing your amazing guitar and you're rocking your boots and you're you're singing to to thousands of people that's when you're your best self you know and this is the extension of you and so yeah that's, that's what, the what was the what was the performance or the music video or whatever that you saw growing up that you went, <laughs> if the singer could have turned around and gone, and welcome to the stage and now, welcome to the stage. Lizzie, yeah. Oh my God. What, which one would it be? Um, honestly, it's probably um, <clears throat> uh, Dio uh, right. live at Donington in 1987. Um, I was obsessed with, I'm still I'm obsessed with that. But, um, you know, we would go and, and, uh, and basically ask all of my family <laughs> members to go out and get us uh, VHS tapes of just live performances. And the way that he captured the crowd was so mind blowing to me because I was a, I don't know whether you know this about me, but I call myself a reformed introvert. I was a very shy kid. Okay. Did not like to make eye contact with people, didn't want responsibility, none of that. And it was these videos that I was trying to dissect. How do you do that? How do you look somebody in the eye and sing mm -hmm. at them in that way? And, and, um, and so it, it took a long time and a lot of practice and a lot of <laughs> messing that up, um, but, uh, but got there eventually. But yeah, I mean, it's, music is the closest thing to magic that we have on this earth. And when you're a kid and you experience that magic for the first time and it really locks in and, and all of a sudden you just become obsessed with figuring out how to pass that along to other people. So. Yeah. You know, like I said, the fact that I'm still here and we're still doing it is is very humbling. Well, let's let's pick another guitar. Let's pick another guitar. All right. Let's just go. <laughs> let's, let's go with the go. big guy. Yeah. You going this one or this one? You mean? Oh, uh, let's. Well, they're both. But let's go. Let's go here. Okay. So this is um, this is my baritone. I don't explorer. think I've ever seen a baritone explorer before. This is my tribute to my father because I was never a good bass player, but this is a happy medium. <laughs> Um, this is custom made for you, right? It is. It is. I um, I neck. asked them to like make it. me two of them so that I have one over here and one in the states. Um, and I'm trying to convince them to do just like a small run, like just make 50 guys. Come I on. think that's an angle. Um, I think that's but a shout. yeah, the. Uh, but with the uh, with the baritones, what I oh sorry about that's that. Right. So I do that to my guitar player <laughs> all the time. Um, but uh, the the wonderful thing that I love about baritones is that uh, obviously t the tonality of it it's straight up the middle. So um, in we have uh, now two so two or three songs in our set that we end up I end up using the uh, the baritone, and you can hear the separation between what uh, my guitar player Joe is doing and my bass player Josh is doing. There's there's that beautiful space that happens, mm -hmm. whereas there's a lot of air in between all of the tones. So um, that's what I enjoy about it. Do you write on a baritone or do you write on a regular acoustic, um, a regular you know, six string? I, I write on a regular six string mostly, but mm -hmm. I find when I go to the baritone, for some reason that ends up being the single. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, it ended up uh, writing on our first our first single, uh, "I Get Off," um, on the baritone, and it was it was one of those things where it was it sounded so odd on the record that it e either was going to be a hit or nobody was going to care, yeah. and um, and I don't know. Again, like just fell in love with it. There's some there's some simplicity that comes with you know having a guitar and having it in that space um, where you can actually you can more or less embody the entire band on this uh, this instrument and so um yeah i don't know it's a, there's some there's something magical about a baritone guitar and i, I wish i i would see more yeah, guitar I, players yeah i only it. think i'd really even discovered the baritone maybe about five or six years ago and it it's my favorite guitar to just play on its own I yes. it sits in this a different register so maybe it's I don't know, maybe I find it easier to kind of sing over the register of a baritone absolutely, or something like that. Absolutely. But. Well, there's there's something to that, too. And, and you know, as far as a, a singer, um, when I was in choir um, in middle school, um, they uh, they put me in the uh, the uh, alto section, not mm -hmm. the not the soprano. Okay. I never really got a whole lot of the high parts. Right. So maybe there's something about that, too. I have just a little bit of a, a deeper register and that's what connects. That's super this with cool. Me. Right. Uh, also, I've, you can't go wrong with the gold top. Come on. No, this is true. Well, you don't see Beautiful. them on, on uh, Explorers often either, do you? But it's a great looking guitar. You have good taste in guitar colors. So straight down the middle. <laughs> straight down the middle. Regular Les Paul stand. In fact, this is just, by the looks of things, just a regular one. It's just a regular one. They, I, actually, it's funny. I, um, I 
literally got this sight unseen because I needed more guitars over here right. in, in, in the UK. So uh, they ended up sending this to me. It's, it's really great. Uh, to be completely honest, it's my least favorite in my collection. But, um, but, uh, but it's, a, it's a solid guitar. It really is, what and I you, like the. I like going for the slimmer neck carve on this one. It's a little bit. It's yeah. It's a little bit slimmer, and so it's a. Uh, that's always fun, yeah. you know, a little shredder neck. Um, and so um, I use this mainly to riff backstage. Just, I know what you mean. It's just I think I've got such a vision of you with uh, does it Explorer. Look weird? It does. does it not look weird. Like <laughs> not weird. Bad. Just weird. Unfamiliar. Um, um, no, it. I mean, like I said, it's like I. I started out as a as a Les Paul girl. My, you know, my first Les Paul was a. Le, it still is. I still have it. Uh, Les Paul Custom Tobacco Burst ninety one. Wow. Uh, was my first uh, Les Paul, and uh, every now and then I bring it out on tour. I've broken the neck on it twice. Not this one, but my. And for some reason, it sounds better with after the broken neck yep. than it did before. So that's just the way that goes. Um, but uh, I forget, they I feel like they, they called this the blood orange, uh, a blood orange, yeah, burst, I think so. It's so, such a long time ago. Um, and yeah, you know, variety is Sounds the spice good. of life. It does. Yeah, it's got a big ring to it, that one. Now, come on, this, uh, like, we've got a little bit of a nod to Tony Iommi here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So, in fact, oh no, so this is a, this is just a regular SG as well? Yeah, this was another one in the package that I kind of got sight unseen. I'm like, I'm like, you know what, I don't have a whole lot of SGs. And let me just, let me just really do the should, visual so check. That, Does that it one look definitely weird? Is. No, that I, looks now, cool. I really like this one. Mm. Um, uh, because it's just so easy <laughs> and do light you, to play. Do you do, now I'm guessing when you're singing, you're, you, you know, you're having to maybe just, um, muscle memory where your hand is going to go and all that kind of stuff rather than do you struggle switching between an sg and the explorer where the sort of because i visual yeah well i'm i'm sometimes. i'll play everything on an sg if i'm not looking a fret above where i would play it on a, a, a les paul or something just because exactly. the whole the whole neck is going to like shifted the whole scale is it i've done that before um whereas i will have to second guess myself like especially some of these new songs that we've been playing there's a song we have called psycho and and it's it, it's odd it starts in like this and i have to start it so the lights are down and this guy comes out and i'm like oh wait <laughs> am i on the right fret like what's going on you know um it definitely feels differently but uh, but I like um, I like using this for a lot of uh, you know parts that I have maybe more of a lead and right. because it's just comfortable and it's easy. Yeah, and also I can run around the stage and not completely like bludgeon my yeah. my, my poor bass player if yeah. I'm trying to pass the room. You know, it's like this is a tiny little package. Um, Are you channeling your inner Tony? Uh, yeah, it, it, well that that's what that's what I like about it being just all black and simple yeah. like that too. It just definitely definitely. Uh, I'm hoping I'm channeling some Tony Iommi. <laughs> <laughs> so we got two more. One is that just a repeat of the of the one we had on the sofa? Yes, that's just a repeat. Okay. Oh, well, actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me see if this is actually. Is that just the repeat? Yes, it is. So now I'm impressed. Don't anybody, anybody okay. who can pull a double neck out and it not just for show actually play a tune. Okay. On it. All right. So here's I, I'm here's ultra impressed. Th this was made as here feel how heavy that is. That's that was insane. my stubbornness because they're like do you want us to chamber it? I'm like no, how heavy could it be? Um, but this is pretty special because this is uh, standard six string on on top and this baritone on the bottom. So I I ended up uh, getting this uh, custom made for me which they 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 swore me to secrecy for the first like two years. Like you can't tell anybody that we made this for you <laughs> because there's been a couple people that have asked us to make this for them and we said no, but we're gonna do it oh, for you. The politics. <laughs> and, oh yes, <laughs> so I had to be like, no, I just found this. Um, but, uh, but ended up uh, needing this for uh, one song in particular when we were making our third record into the wildlife. Um, our song "I Am the Fire" mm -hmm. because I had two separate parts when we were when we were recording it in the studio, and and you know one requires the standard and then you got to drop it low, you know and uh, and so I'm like I just I need to be able to pull this off live and um, for any of you who have never seen us live we don't do any tracks or trickery there's no click nobody's miming uh, so uh, so got to figure out how to do it just with four people so I'm like okay I'm gonna have to do double duty. And um, and so it, it's it's awesome. 
except for when you have two songs in a row that I need to play. <laughs> because by the end of that second song, I'm like, okay, here, you know, if I have back problems when I'm older, it'll be because of this one. Did, did you see the video in the summer of uh, when Steve Vai did the Hydra? And it's got eight. Oh, he's eight got that eight, I know. And one of it's a I, bass and one of it's a... And I, I was talking, to, I did an interview with Steve and I'm like, so obviously that whole video, you never actually, he's like, no, that, that video, that's, that's the take that you hear. And yep. I'm just like... It's like, what are you doing? I know, it's just amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's, um, it's fascinating because every player is different, you know, and, and you can't necessarily compare yourself to other players. You can be inspired by people, but it's just amazing how someone's brain works in one way and then and then you, you know your brain works in a completely other way and and it's uh that's the the beauty of music yeah I suppose, for but. sure well look i kind of feel like we should at least get a chord seeing as oh, your absolutely. crew went to all the effort so, to set all I mean, your it's, gear it's, <laughs> it's plugged in we might as well all right uh, i well, highly highly approve of these 20 watt marshals we got i think three or four of these in the studio just and, and like we used to have the 100 watt ones and could never use them. Yeah. Or at least could, they were so low they didn't sound that great. These we use all the when time. When we were making um, uh, our last album, Vicious, um, we had my 100 watt in another room, like, like, like outside of the studio. There was a shed. <laughs> and we were in the control room and we could still hear it because, <laughs> because it was cranked so loud. But yeah, it's, you know, it's, there's something about having, you know, the amp, you know, that classic, you know, amp tone that loud but also you know it's not the 1960s yes. anymore and you don't have to reach the back of the, the arena which are you, is the amp. are you fairly so. quiet on stage or um you know what we turn we we turn everything backwards so we try you right. know there's some decent volume for uh all of the all of the roadies uh that are trying to have <laughs> a quiet moment backstage that we don't allow them to have <laughs> pedal board wise some of these bits i'm familiar with some not so much um, I've got it. This is the, I got one of these on my board, which is super super yes. handy. Um, but I'm not familiar with this. So what? It, well, t talk us through. What's your basic well, pedal board the, rig? Well, the Octonaut is actually new for me as well. So I'm you know using that as a slight just overdrive for mm -hmm. some a little just extra sizzle. Um, and then I'm using uh, the Tube Screamer for uh, to boost my solos. But really, I mean, I uh, on this particular tour, I have not yet used the Pog. Right. And I'm not really using the you know the delay. Now the the tuner is very important. My favorite pedal it makes everything sound great. Um, <laughs> but uh, but honestly, uh, I love the Jerry Control Wah. Right. Um, I I use it uh, really just for an after effect and a, a lot of the. Um, more uh, lead parts that I do that I want to sound more like a voice. Um, there's a part in uh, in one of our songs, I Miss the Misery, where we're doing the oh, and um, I'm not gonna make my guys sing the high harmony, so I end up playing um, it on guitar with my voice, and, and I, ended up, I end up using the Jerry Control Wall for that. Um, also, uh, <laughs> the, the biggest reason why I've, I've uh, continued to use the Jerry Control Wall is because Jerry and I have a small, um, joke between us because I had said in the press that I step on Jerry control every night. <laughs> so every time that I see Jerry in full public view, it's not in private, like we're passing each other at some convention or doing whatever, he lays down on the floor and makes me <laughs> step on him. He, I think he he's got a, something about that. But he needs you know, a Lizzie <laughs> Hale overdrive or something I know like that so that he can sort of return them. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. <laughs> uh, I, you've got the best name ever for your noise suppressor as well. Yes. <laughs> what was the, I mean, the great pedal, but it's kind of like, I, I can't think of necessarily it's, where you're using it's a, that. It's, a, it's kind of a one trick pony. Like I, I, um, I, I, I use it as more of like a, I can get kind of like an organ tone okay. out of that for uh, one of our songs, I Like It Heavy, that has just kind of like this kind of organ mm -hmm. lead thing that, uh, you know, again, we have to figure out how to recreate all of our songs live once we have harebrained schemes in the uh, in the studio. Um, but um, I have used it for uh, Amen before as well. I just feel like there, in a lot of ways, my guitar player Joe is using a lot of that kind of doubling right. situation. So when it just kind of becomes too much, and yeah. like after song after song, it just becomes too much of a sound. So um, you know, w we mainly use that in the studio as just kind of layering and or if we want to make a lead really sound wild but uh, there's something 
again, sort of the older I get, the more reassured I become about the idea that Gibson, Tube Screamer, Marshall, it's like, it's been, it's been such a constant in my life. Of and it's course. like, and it's just, it, it, I think sometimes you go away from it because you're kind of going, there must be something else yeah, out there. We gotta be you know, unique, that, yeah. we gotta do this. And then you just come back to it and, and it's like, oh, this is my happy place. You know, it's Absolutely. like. It uh, well, doesn't sound any better. <laughs> I think I think with rock and roll too, nobody's trying to reinvent the wheel. We just want to be the absolute best wheel we can be. You know, maybe set the wheel on fire. You know, <laughs> but uh, but it's you know, you don't. A lot of what you do as a guitar player and what I do as a guitar player doesn't necessarily come from the equipment. You want to have the best equipment and the best chance possible to to. Uh, to get your art to reach people, but it it comes from inside of you. You know, it comes from your fingers. It comes from where where you brain out the songs and 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 uh, the the message that you're trying to send. And so this is the platform that we use to to launch. Well, that. my aging knees aren't going to take any more of kneeling down in this <laughs> position. So let's stand back up and uh, and look. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank and, you so much. Uh, thank you so much for making the time for us. I appreciate uh, it. And yeah, look, it's been an amazing tour, uh, amazing 2022, uh, and home in time for Christmas, which yes. is good. So enjoy a bit of a break. Apparently you're hitting Australia, New Zealand, Japan. Yeah, no no rest for the wicked. No. Absolutely not. Yeah, so, so we end this tour, uh, you know, we fly home tomorrow, spend a little bit of time with family, over the holidays and then uh, yeah on the 22nd I head to to New Zealand and New Zealand Australia Japan and then we are booked through 2023 so it's uh you've well, got to keep you. going absolutely. absolutely well look it's been a pleasure thank you so much thank you darling uh please let's just uh, let's just play out I know, with I was some say, uh, epic oh just the pack on okay I was gonna say everything's on Peace.